Hawkeye is out on Disney Plus now. It is the latest MCU TV show. I believe it's only going to last one season. The only one that they've announced that's going to have a season two is Loki. Hawkeye focuses on Clint Barton, who is just trying to get home to his family for Christmas after he's visiting New York, but he gets tied up with his protege, Kate Bishop, in a conspiracy involving people, Kate Bishop's family, and, and now he has to help her with that. So this review of Hawkeye is going to contain spoilers for Hawkeye. If you have yet to see the show, I suggest you don't watch this until you watch the show and then come back and enjoy this video of Hawkeye. There's a lot of people out there that don't like Hawkeye. They think he's the most boring Avenger, and I'm with you on that, but I've never disliked Hawkeye. I mean, I feel like there's people out there that are just going to dislike the show because it is a focus on Hawkeye, and those people are going to want Hawkeye to die. Look, look, I'm just going to say this. If he hasn't gotten ganked to this point, Hawkeye is never going to get ganked. Even then, it looked like the lesser of the Disney Plus TV shows. This just looked like something that could pass time. And that's essentially how I view it. It is something that passes time. It's not amazing or anything. It's by far, I think, one of the weaker MCU shows. I do like it over Falcon and Winter Soldier, though. I think that this is a show that, as it went on, got better. Even though there are things in some episodes, especially the season finale or the series finale, whatever it's going to be, that I didn't agree with decision-wise, and we'll get there, but let me start with the first episode, because the first episode I thought started off really good, where you see a young Kate Bishop living with her family in New York, her mother is played by uh, Vera Farmiga, and she's witnessing the battle in New York from the first Avengers movie. The Chitari coming down, and she sees Hawkeye from across the way, and she immediately becomes Hawkeye's biggest fan. So yay, Hawkeye has a fan now. He's still not getting ganked, haters. And so that inspires her to take up archery. After that opening scene, that first episode was really, really rough. Uh, there was some really rough editing. The auction scene I thought was really terrible. The editing in that action sequence and the way that it was filmed was very, very choppy to the point of it being incomprehensible. We're also introduced to the tracksuit mafia in that episode, who I thought was just a discount knockoff of the Flag Smashers from Falcon and Winter Soldier. And the episode just kind of ends with Hawk, with Clint finding Kate somehow. There's also going to be people that are going to be bitching about the fact that Kate is able to leap over obstacles like it's little to nothing. I mean, I guess that she's been training years for this to the point where they're gonna call her a Mary Sue. I don't view any female character in any property, not just Marvel, but anything as a Mary Sue. I just hate terminology like that. I just, I don't think about that stuff. I just kind of view it as, well, she was the biggest Hawkeye fan and now she spent years and years training to <laughs> try and meet Hawkeye, and I guess that explains it, but I don't know, I was more just focused on how incomprehensible that scene actually was. I want to talk about Kate Bishop for a minute, because the first episode introduces her as this 22-year-old. She's played by magnificently by Haley Steinfeld. I think Haley Steinfeld is a great young talent, and she captures the character of Kate Bishop really, really well. Kate Bishop is bubbly, annoying, irresponsible, yet excited. And Haley Steinfeld was able to conjure all of those emotions up in her performance. And at times when Kate Bishop gets annoying, it does play it off as comic relief sometimes. But I never, ever once wanted her to leave, I guess. Even, to, even if there were a couple of lines that she had where I was like, ugh. You didn't have to say that. I wanted to see what her journey would be and how she would interact with Hawkeye. Episode 2 took it a step up. Still wasn't on the ball. I, I think episode two is actually the least memorable of the series. I'm thinking about it now. I'm, I don't really remember all that much about episode two. But episode three is where things kick into high gear. The entire, <laughs> the entire episode is like an action sequence. And it's phenomenal. You're, they're being chased by Echo and the tracksuit mafia. Echo's a really good character that was introduced in episode two. I believe she was introduced in episode two. Maybe it was the beginning of episode three, but you see that tragic backstory with her. I thought that actually gave her a good motivation and reasoning for going after Clint. And now when Clint and Kate escape in episode three, I love the action sequence because it's a really good car chase that's filmed in camera. It's comprehensible. There's no poor editing, but it's just a lot of fun. And that's the best way to describe the show for me is that 
while it's not top tier MCU, while it's kind of just middle of the pack and it's middle of the pack for the MCU shows as well, that's all I could ask for for an MCU show. And Clint Barton in episode two, hanging out in Renaissance fairs, <laughs> he got to LARP and that got a good chuckle out of me. But this action scene in episode three, to key, I know I keep jumping around, but this action scene in episode three, I just loved it when Clint had all the different arrows that he could use, like the Pym arrow. That was the highlight of the show for me. And then episode four comes around and, we're, and Yelena, Florence Pugh, comes in at the end. It just, it felt like it was this really forced thing, but I knew that Florence Pugh was going to be in Hawkeye because if you watch the post credit scene for Black Widow, it set that up so that she would go after Hawkeye. So that added another element of tension to the show while also just trying to be the show where Clint not only has to take on Kate Bishop as his protege and not only try and get home in time for Christmas to his family, but it also deals with his hearing loss. That really starts, I think, towards the end of episode two and it continues throughout the the rest of the show. When it started, it was a bit rocky, but once it hit like episode three, episode four with that, there's a, I forget what episode it is, but there's a scene where he's talking with his son on the phone and he can't hear him because he doesn't have his hearing aids in. So Kay literally has to write down what's being said by his son and he has to respond to that. And I thought that that was brilliant. Episode five has a really great scene with Yelena and Kate Bishop in Kate Bishop's apartment. Just the, just the Florence Pugh's presence and the, her portrayal of Yelena, it's such a stark contrast compared to Natasha. That, that's why it works. And I actually really love that. And that continues on into episode six. At the end of episode five, we are teased with the return of a big Marvel character that was in a Netflix TV show, and that is Kingpin. So if you're bringing back Charlie Cox as Matt Murdock in No Way Home, Spoilers for No Way Home if you haven't seen it. Then you have to bring back Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin. And they brought him back. And I thought that that was really cool. There, I thought overall the season finale was solid. There were just a couple of choices with Kingpin that I didn't really like. It just seemed like Kingpin was rushed in, showed up, said some things, got blown up about five times, and then finally shot. So is he dead? I have no idea. I really hope not. If he's dead, fuck this episode. If he's not dead, then okay, which I don't I don't believe he's dead. Kingpin being in episode six was a bit rushed for me. The rest of the episode mostly worked, minus the Kingpin stuff. And I have no I have no qualms about Kingpin being in the show. It seemed like you needed at least one or two more episodes. WandaVision was eight or nine episodes. Falcon and Winter Soldier was eight, I think. You could have given Hawkeye another couple. You could have, you should have had, I think, Kingpin, if you're going to do a six-episode TV series, and you're going to bring in Kingpin as the main villain, Kingpin should have been introduced at the end of episode three and should have been in at least three full episodes. So while I'm happy that Kingpin came back and it's Vincent D'Onofrio reprising his role from the Daredevil TV show and that the Daredevil TV show is now canon within the MCU itself, that entire Kingpin thing just felt rushed to me. The tracksuit mafia didn't get on my nerves after a while. I really liked how they were handled, their connection with Echo, who's gonna be getting her own spin-off TV series. I'm actually really intrigued by that. Vera Farmiga, you know, hiding some secrets here and there. It really worried me at first because the, the way the first episode ends, it sets up this mystery that didn't seem like it was gonna be all that interesting, but it ended up being fairly solid. And I gotta give the show props for that. Hawkeye for me isn't the greatest MCU TV series and I wasn't expecting it to be. I just needed something that I didn't have to think about all that much. I could, if I had to, I could turn my brain off. I could just have fun with it. It just felt very light in its tone. And I think after WandaVision, Loki, Falcon and Winter Soldier, I think that's what we needed from an MCU Disney Plus TV show. And I'm happy that we got it. It's not, ama it's not amazing, I have my issues, especially those first couple of episodes and how Kingpin was handled, but overall, I found myself enjoying this show a lot. And if it does get a season two, I'll be happy to see where it goes, but I don't think it is, because this is one of those MCU TV shows that has a sense of finality to it. This feels like the final chapter of Clint Barton's story, and I really want to see more of Haley Steinfeld as Kate Bishop. So I have this show to thank for introducing me to new characters that I've never really seen before, while also improving as the show went along. Even if the final episode wasn't as good as it should have been due to the forced nature of Kingpin being in the episode, but I did like that he was the main antagonist throughout the entire series and 
how Vera Farmiga was connected to him. I, I liked all I liked all that and I mean Yelena coming back. Yeah, there's a couple of force moments, but it's what I expected. You know, it's middle tier MCU and mostly middle tier MCU for me has major problems, but it's still entertaining. And that's how I look at Hawkeye. So have you guys seen Hawkeye? Drop me some feedback in the comment section below. I will leave my link to my website in the description below as well. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex Madden and I'll see you at the movies somewhere.